After comparing your edit quality with all the other videos you see on your TikTok for you page, something feels oh. off. Why do they look so clear compared to mine? Everyone else has such a sharp quality, whereas mine looks extremely bad with a lot of grain. How can I fix this? What can I do? Well, don't worry, because they will show you step by step how you can use Topaz AI to upscale your videos and make them look way sharper. So if you struggle with a low quality, especially after uploading your edit to social media, make sure to watch till the end because in this video I got you covered. And to start, obviously, we're gonna have to open Topaz. In my case, I use the V3 option, which you can get on my Discord server completely for free. And now to import your footage, simply just drag it onto your screen. As you can see, in this case, I'm gonna show you how to do it with a Patrick Bateman clip. But before changing the actual settings within Topaz, we have to make sure that our footage meets some certain requirements for us to achieve the best quality possible. Which one is gonna be your render settings and two gonna be the effects you already have on your footage. Just use the render settings that you can find in the video that's currently linked in the top right corner. For the effects that you actually put on the footage, I would recommend you to not put any before upscaling the actual footage. Because we want our clips to be the base of our edit where we later on add effects to. This will not only preserve the quality and make it look way better, but also give you the chance to later on, maybe if you're unsatisfied with some settings, change them. The same thing goes for your color correction, only add this after upscaling your actual clips, not before. And once you meet these criteria, we can go ahead and start adjusting the actual settings within Topaz. For the preset, I'm gonna put none, and the resolution of the video I'm gonna leave in the original because I already adjusted it to my composition size. Now, if you have a whole video that you wanna upscale from HD to 4K quality, you definitely wanna choose 4K quality in here. There's certain presets that you can choose from, but in that case, I would suggest upscale to 4K or upscale to HD resolution. As I said, in my case, I don't need to. And next, we're gonna leave all these settings off except for enhancement because obviously we wanna upscale our video. So go ahead, turn it on. And for the video type, you wanna choose progressive. Leave the AI model as Pro Toys, fine tune, enhance, and set the parameters from auto to manual so we can adjust all the settings manually. Let's start with the revert compression setting, which is basically just gonna remove grain and noise from your video. I'm gonna put this value from zero up to 50. And note that the higher compression you have on your original clip, the higher you should put this value. Because mine isn't that high, I'm just gonna go for a value that's in the middle. Next, we have improved detail, which as the name already reveals, is just gonna improve a bit of the detail that you have in your video. Because as you can see, when we zoom onto our clip, we have like the small details that are looking a bit blurry. I always like to put a bit more of that, so I'm gonna put it to 50 as well. Next, we're gonna increase the sharpen amount a bit and put it from zero up to 35. Note that what value you put here is strongly gonna be dependent of what clip you have and what color correction you're later gonna use because if you already have a lot of sharpen on your coloring, you don't have to additionally add it in here. That's why I like to keep it a bit lower, so I'm gonna go for a lower value. Next, we got reduce noise. Unfortunately, all these settings are pretty self-explanatory. With this setting, we're just gonna remove some of the noise. Because as you can see on my clip, there is not a lot of noise. I'm just gonna put this value to 25. If you can see that your clip has a lot of initial noise on it, you wanna put this value a bit up. But if you don't have a lot of it, make sure to keep it low because it can kind of mess up the quality otherwise. Now the, the halo setting, you're only gonna use very rarely because what this does is basically, if you have an over sharpened clip at certain edges, it's gonna try to remove that. Which as you can see is not the case for us, but I would still kind of put a low value. So we're just gonna go for 10 on here in case there's something that we missed with our bare eye. Next up is anti alias and deep blur which is the only setting that you can put negative. In my case, I'm gonna go for negative 30. And depending on your clip again, what really you wanna put here is gonna change. If your original clip is rather blurry, which you can tell by looking at it, you should put the value up. But if your clip has a lot more aliasing, you should put the value down, which in my case I did. Now, obviously we don't wanna add any initial noise to our edit. So we're just gonna leave the setting at zero. And last but not least, you're gonna put the recover original detail setting from 20 up to 50. As the name already says, this is just gonna recover some detail from the original clip. And the higher you go, the more detail is gonna be preserved of the original clip you use. Now, this is it for the enhancement in AI settings. Now, there's also other options that you can enable, which is stabilization, motion deblur, and frame interpolation. But because I use clips from a professional shot movie, we're not gonna use the stabilization or motion deblur setting. Now, if on the other hand, you wanna upscale a video that maybe was shot on a phone and has a lot of initial shaking in it by hand movement or wind or whatever, it might be a good idea to utilize these settings as well. Now, for the time interpolation, we're also not gonna use that because for our slow-mo, we obviously later on gonna add time remap or Twixer within After Effects. Last but not least, we're gonna change our output settings so our quality is preserved while upscaling. And obviously, we're gonna choose video, put the encoder to H.264, the profile to high, the bitrate we're gonna put to constant, and obviously for the target bitrate, choose 180. Now, I don't want my clip to have audio, so I'm just gonna put it to none, and the container I'm gonna put to MOV. If you have a slow PC, I would disable the included live preview, but I'm just gonna let it run. And once you adjusted all the settings, it's finally time to take a look at the preview to see what your upscale edit will look like. And to do that, just click on preview. And this is going to take some time to load. And once that's done, you can tell that the quality is already a lot better. If you can't see it yet, just zoom in. For example, take the eye. And if you take a look
look at the right one, which is the upscale compared to the left one, the original, you can tell that you are missing out on a lot of quality while not using Topaz. And if you're satisfied with the upscale AI model, the only thing left to do is to export the edit. And to do that, just click to the right and hit export. And know that this might take a while depending on how fast your computer works and how long your video is. And once it's done upscaling, the most important and last step is gonna be adding a good color correction. As you can see, adding a good color correction can increase the looks of your edits immensely. And if you now wonder where you can get such a color correction, don't worry because I'm still currently running a huge sale in my shop. You can get up to 70% off of my colorings that I use to make my edits look the best. It's the first thing in the description and as I said, it's a missed opportunity for everyone who doesn't utilize it. Because a mistake that I see so many new editors do is not using a proper color correction and it's holding them back so much. So don't be one of them and check out the way of becoming famous by clicking the first link in the description. And if this tutorial was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Also let me know in the comments down below what tutorial you want to see next. And if you now want to join a cool editing community where you can just chat to other editors, get free stuff or talk to me, make sure to also check the link in the description to my Discord server. It's a great environment for new editors to be in and you can actually learn a lot of stuff on there. I'm sure I will be seeing you on there and as always, I thank you for watching and see you next time.